in this week's Bizline. Vietnam's labor market recovers strongly in 2022. And later on, measures to improve labor quality and productivity in Vietnam. Hello there, you're tuning in to Bizline, our weekly economic journal on VTV International. Since Vietnam fully reopened its economy, the labor market has recorded strong signs of recovery. Newly released data show that the unemployment rate in the third quarter was at 2.28%, the lowest rate since the COVID-19 pandemic. The labor force has reached 51.9 million people. The strong recovery of economic activities has improved the labor market and shown that the economy is on track to regain its full capacity. Disruption caused by COVID-19 are now way behind, but global demand for goods has declined, and experts suggest that this is an appropriate occasion to review the country's structural plan and improve labour productivity. This is also an important task, especially since Vietnam is entering its post-golden population period. What measures should be taken to improve labour quality and productivity, as well as promote the development of high-quality human resources? That is the topic of this week's Bizline. But first, let's get an update on Vietnam's labour market in the first 10 months and labour productivity growth this year from the following video. As part of efforts to help Vietnam's economy recover and thrive, the government has drastically directed the implementation of the Socio-Economic Recovery and Development Program. This has resulted in the economy picking up in most sectors in the third quarter of 2022. Thanks to this, the country's labor market during the period managed to maintain its recovery momentum, during which, the scale of the labor force increased by 2.8 million people compared to the third quarter of 2021. In the first three quarters of 2022, the employment rate spiked and was higher than that of the same period in 2019, before the COVID-19 pandemic broke out. I think the good news for Vietnam, of course, it was relatively less affected compared with many other Southeast Asian countries. So the impact on labour productivity and inequality was even greater in other countries. The improved productivity will enhance overall national economic growth and the size of the Vietnamese economy and therefore its influence in the region and the world. Despite this, the country's labour productivity growth rate did not meet the target of 5.5% as it is estimated to have reached about 4.7 to 5.2% in the first three quarters. Meanwhile, this criterion is significant as it reflects the economy's competitiveness. The only way to become a middle-income country is by taking a labor force which is not growing very quickly uh, and uh, having it produce more uh, through better capital and through better technology, and if you don't do that, you'll stay pretty much where you are, uh, which is not a bad place, but you would rather be in a better place. And the better place requires more capital and more skills in the labor force and more technology. In addition, according to many experts and international organizations in the 21st century, economies are driven by skills. In this age, the decisive factor in the competitiveness of a country is the skills of its labor force. As such, enterprises need to constantly seek highly skilled employees. The enhancement of labor skills is a crucial factor for boosting socio-economic development in the 2021 to 2030 period, as this will propel the country toward becoming a high-income developed country by mid-century. For more in-depth comments, we connect with economist Yun Liu, HSBC Global Research from HSBC Bank. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Vietnam has come a long way to change the structure of the labor market, shifting workers from the agriculture sector to higher value added manufacturing and service sectors. The labor market also benefits from the golden population with a dependency ratio of the population consistently being below 50% since 2006. So what do you think about the recovery speed of the labor market in Vietnam this year? 
Yeah, sure. So I think Vietnam has done uh, quite a you know good job um, in recovering its labor market since uh, its reopening um, you know at the uh, at the middle of uh, of, uh, of March this year. And you know um, we will look at a number of indicators here and there. You know, unemployment rates, uh, uh, labor participation rate, um, and it seems that you know Vietnam is moving into a, a very good direction. So this really benefits uh, uh, you know the the labor market. And this is also what we saw in the private consumption. You know, retail sales data, which have been really reflecting, uh, you know, booming um, a domestic or recovering domestic demand because of that um, uh, labor market recovery story. What do you think about Vietnam's labor productivity growth rate? Vietnam has done a good job. You know, we have seen that transition in the past. Um, so with the right policies in place, with the right, um, you know, incentives um, that we, we expect that, you know, Vietnam to reach that potential. Um, because, I mean, improving your labor uh, uh, productivity is really key uh, to realizing your growth potential. And, and, and Vietnam has that ambition and, and has that potential to, to do it. Vietnam's rate of trained workers with degrees and certificates has reached about 26%, still lower than other countries in the region. This is why a comprehensive reform of the vocational training and educational system to focus on improving skills and providing vocational training is one of the nine solutions that the Prime Minister has highlighted. In fact, the good, proactive management of a skilled labor force will help enterprises and the economy resolve bottlenecks in the labor shortage. For example, this company employs more than 30,000 workers who specialize in the production of electronic equipment components for high-end computers and mobile phones. The enterprise has partnered with vocational training institutions. Accordingly, students can study and practice their training at the factory at the same time. After finishing their training, they are able to secure jobs in production lines right away. When they come here and start their training, we already have a job plan for them. By doing this, we can save up to billions of Vietnam dong in recruitment and retraining costs than before. Đây là một cái sự chủ động tích cực của doanh nghiệp và người chủ sử dụng lao động để doanh nghiệp có thể phát triển và phát triển bền vững, hội nhập được với nền kinh tế khu vực của quốc tế. Đây chính là một trong 9 giải pháp mà chính phủ, thủ tướng chính phủ đã đưa ra trong chỉ đạo điều hành trong công tác phát triển nguồn nhân lực của nước nhà trong thời gian này. Among the nine solutions the Prime Minister has directed for developing a sustainable labor market, four of them are related to vocational training. The government is also spending over 80 million US dollars in vocational training and is expected to mobilize more to further strengthen sources of skilled labor. When you want to increase labor productivity, other elements of training become increasingly important. You know, vocational skills will become increasingly important. Um, so it's important to get that it sorts of education out. And the progress there has been good, but it could be improved a lot. And um, and then in university education, of course, will become increasingly important. And not not just the the hard sciences, but also the, the softer sciences in management, quality control, all these sorts of aspects uh, are going to be increasingly important. Um, so it's important to build the capacity of vocational training, um, build the capacity of universities, possibly continue to increase the cooperation internationally to share experiences, um, foreign experiences to Vietnam and Vietnam experiences to foreign countries. The Prime Minister has stressed the nine important solutions for raising awareness about the central role of the labour market, including considering labour as a special commodity for which appropriate mechanisms and policies should be developed. In addition, stabilizing the macroeconomic situation must be prioritized, along with efforts to promote growth to help create more jobs and livelihoods, thereby improving people's lives and promoting the development of the labor market. According to many experts, Vietnam's labor productivity growth rate is rising, but not significantly, and the professional and technical level of the labor force has improved, but the quality of the labor force remains low. So what do you think about this? 
Yeah, so if we look at the data, you know, 25% of the population or 25% of the workforce, um, it's still in, you know, unskilled occupation. Um, and, you know, if we look at the breakdown of workforce in different sectors, there's still a large chunk of, uh, of labor force um, in, in agriculture. So there's still a potential, you know, to move those population um, into more productive sectors like manufacturing and services. Um, and that's why, you know, in our report, um, we, we think that, you know, given the right policies on education, you know, on tertiary education, on vocational training, then um, that's a direction that, you know, Vietnam uh, should, should, uh, should, should move towards. Too. It can be said that with the opportunity to join a large economic bloc, FTAs have contributed to attracting more investment into new production technologies and boosted labor productivity in Vietnam. Along with the development of the export-oriented manufacturing industry, what can you say about the impacts these agreements have had on improving labor productivity and the quality of human resources in Vietnam? Vietnam used to produce or Vietnam used to export a lot of you know, textile uh, foodware, which is relatively lower. And, um, and then thanks to this consistent and FDI inflows in the past 20 years from tech companies. You know, Vietnam now has become uh, the production base um, for a lot of a large a, a lot of the tech companies. You know, for their consumer for their smartphones, for their consumer electronics. So you know, we we we've seen that transition uh, happening in Vietnam, and you know, Vietnam also has that ambition. I think last time we also talked about you know Vietnam's ambition in um in in in, in terms of its you know or in the space of, uh, of chips with the right policies, you know, that's also a direction that Vietnam can go, you know, to move up the value chain, to really increase the, the productivity uh, of labor. FTAs help Vietnam diversify its products and markets. According to the Ministry of Industry and Trade, after three years of implementation, incentives that enterprises enjoy are large enough to create stronger export momentum. As such, this is the perfect time to prioritize boosting exports and take advantage of incentives from FTAs to improve product quality and labor productivity. According to a recent HSBC report, productivity kicks alone could raise real incomes by 5% by 2035 in economies like Thailand, Vietnam, and Malaysia. Uh, that's a reasonable estimate. Um, and, you know, again, the reason is that Vietnam has um, a, a labor force that uh, is is productive. Uh, it, it, it works well uh, with foreign investment. And uh, I think one of the things you could do and should do is uh, work on uh, skilling people uh, so that, you know, there are more managers, there are more sort of uh, shop level engineers and and I, I think if you do that and and do that kind of training then productivity will increase you, you know the machines will work better the people will have higher skilled jobs and they'll be paid more the development of global value chains promotes deep integration of the labor market and international labor mobility this requires workers not only to have high level vocational skills but also to have soft skills and gain the ability to work in an international environment in that context, Vietnam needs to comply with common development rules, including labor standards and modern international labor market management standards. The Ministry of Planning and Investment has also very wisely put a focus on high-tech FDI. Many some semiconductor uh, manufacturing is also moving towards Vietnam now. We see a lot of focus on that, which I think is a fantastic opportunity for Vietnam. And again, the labor force then will need to be digitally upskilled and reskilled. And data science will become super important in coding. And the Vietnamese people, I think, have a clear advantage because Vietnam consistently ranks extremely high when it comes to mathematics uh, education compared to other countries around the world amongst high school students and tertiary st students. I think the free trade agreements are very important and a good thing. It allows you to keep on removing very low productivity workers in agriculture. Their productivity is only about half of the average and move them into, agri into manufacturing, for example, where uh, it's about average now, uh, roughly. You get a real benefit from that. According to many international organizations, Vietnamese workers' integration ability is not high, and their skill level is still relatively low compared to regional and global standards. Thus, low skills can be considered a barrier for Vietnamese workers in the 4.0 job market, and a barrier for Vietnam to move towards global integration in the future.
Therefore, making effective use of FTAs will also contribute to increasing labor productivity and improving industrial efficiency, thereby increasing the country's competitiveness in the global arena. Vietnam is considered an attractive destination for foreign investors. Along with favorable policies, the labor force is another factor that attracts investment. In your opinion, what are the competitive advantages of Vietnamese workers? For investors, cost effectiveness is probably um, a number one concern, but it really is also thanks to you know, other factors or com a combination of factors like you know, the hardworking uh, uh, Vietnamese uh, population or workforce, um, you know, and preferential tax policies, um, um, uh, FDI incentives, you know, and, and also all these numerous trade deals. So there's a whole combination of factors that actually attract you know, foreign investors um, into Vietnam. So Vietnam did a great job in, um, in or, you know, in attracting a lot of FDI relocation to Vietnam. And um, we continue, the, we, we expect this trend to continue um, in Vietnam, you know, with the right policy. So one is, you know, leveling up your workforce. And then the other one, I think we talked about it a, a few months ago, which is, you know, to improve your, your infrastructure connectivity. So with all these uh, combination of factors uh, put in place, then uh, Vietnam will, will move um, into the, 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 the right direction. The Vietnamese labor force is indeed being increasingly exposed to higher value added skills and knowledge. There are signs that the gains in manufacturing are flowing into a wider variety of more complex products. So what do you think about this? And it is a positive sign that the quality of human resources in Vietnam is improving. It's also sort of, you know, his historical trend that we've seen in other Asian economies where, as well, right? You know, first start with Japan and then uh, the, the Four Little Dragons or Four Little Tigers and then move on to uh, mainland China and then now Southeast Asia with, you know, Vietnam, which Vietnam is an outperformer, but with the, with the right, you know, industrial policies um, and um, also the, 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 the global opportunities that came up, you know, they have, a lot of them have moved up the value chain. You know, there is also, that's also probably the path for, for Vietnam as well. This company currently has hired 120 employees. Apart from programmers, the company's leaders have also focused on recruiting office workers that have basic technology skills for their jobs as well as for team working. Với chúng tôi thì các cái yêu cầu đó nó mặc định là phải có rồi. À, tất nhiên à, với những cái bạn sinh viên mới ra trường hoặc là những bạn vừa mới đi làm thì chưa kịp trang bị cho mình những cái kiến thức đó thì sẽ được đào tạo ngay trong những cái ngày đầu tiên đi làm. One of the common recruitment priorities of businesses is to find people with skills in using digital products, especially for technical positions. An innovation or teamwork mindset is also a skill expected by employers in this era. Trước đây chúng ta ít để ý những kỹ năng như là giải quyết vấn đề, kỹ năng làm việc nhóm, mà làm việc nhóm một cách có hiệu quả thì bây giờ là lúc chúng ta cần phải chú ý đến những hoạt động đó và làm sao vận dụng được các công cụ hiện nay về số để phục vụ không phải vấn đề chỉ giải trí mà là vấn đề làm việc để người ta có thể làm phát huy được những cái kỹ năng số như vậy, các cái năng lực số như vậy thì đương nhiên là cái môi trường cũng phải tạo cho người ta những cái điều kiện thuận lợi. Vietnam is seen as having many advantages in developing digital skills for the labor force, thanks to the high proportion of people exposed to the internet and technology. However, digital human resources in Vietnam have not yet reached their potential, leading to a shortage of high-quality workers. To solve this problem, it is necessary to train workers according to the market's requirements. Through 5G, as an innovation platform, many new jobs will be created through startup entrepreneurship. And again, the government has put a very strong focus on startup entrepreneurship, providing a lot of incentives and young people in Vietnam, super dynamic, hardworking, innovative, creative. And I believe that Vietnam will create many more new jobs in new industries, new companies that will come out of Vietnam that will be emanating from Vietnam, startups, unicorns. The Vietnamese government has determined that focusing on digital human resources is one of the key factors that will contribute to the realization of the country's goals in the National Digital Transformation Program to 2025, with a vision for 2030. 
Digital skills can be applied in many different industries and can help the country transform into a digital economy towards the goal of achieving sustainable development. How do you evaluate policies to support, restore and improve the labour market as well as improve the productivity and quality of labour force in Vietnam? Yeah, yeah, sure. So I, I think, you know, um, in, if we look at, you know, the uh, past 10, 20 years, I, I think Vietnam really has done a good job uh, in terms of elevating general, uh, general uh, education. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in our report, we actually put up, you know, some of the uh, options for, for the country to, to consider, uh, you know, in order to uh, move up or in order to uh, increase the productivity to realize the potential uh, uh, growth. So one is to, you know, to sort of lower the opportunity cost in tertiary education. And then number two is to expand that funding for tertiary education, really emphasizing on tertiary education. And then the next thing, you know, is not to forget about, you know, vocational training, also increase uh, the quality of vocational training. If Vietnam wants to climb up the value chain, there is a need, you know, to have the right set of skills to, to um, reach the higher end of the, the manufacturing part. What do you think about the development of the labor market and the growth rate of labor productivity in Vietnam in the time ahead? In my opinion, I think it's really the education part. Um, we have seen, you know, Vietnam's, uh, Vietnamese peers um, um, sort of, you know, going through the same trend. So, um, you know, ter really focusing on or emphasizing on tertiary education, but then at the same time, do not forget about vocational training. I think, you know, these are these are two sort of parallel path that uh, Vietnam needs to focus. I think this is, you know, a, a structural problem that we've been talking about for quite a long time. Um, obviously, you know, uh, very unfortunately, it was disrupted not only in Vietnam, but, you know, in, in, in the world. It, obviously, a lot of the priorities were disrupted by the pandemic. But now, you know, with the pandemic, um, um, with, you know, all the, pretty much most of the, the countries moving past the pandemic, it is time to rethink about or to reassess those priorities. Um, and, and um, you know, it's, it's also good for, for um, the country to think about, you know, the right policies for, you know, specific policies for Vietnam, for the country to, to move forward. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having us. The Prime Minister has emphasized nine important solutions for raising awareness about the labor market, considering labor a special commodity for which appropriate mechanisms and policies must be developed. The government will prioritize stabilizing the macroeconomy and promoting economic growth, thus contributing to creating jobs, improving people's livelihoods and promoting the development of the labor market. Experts say that effectively promoting a better allocation of resources and technologies will deliver the biggest productivity kick to Vietnam. Improving productivity also means improving the quality of labor. In addition, Vietnam is adopting a strategy of developing an export-oriented manufacturing industry. This will contribute to increasing the productivity of the manufacturing industry and the goal of becoming a high-quality global manufacturing hub. And on that note, we wrap up this edition of BizLine. Stay with us for more content or if you're on the go, feel free to download our app VTV Go from App Store or Google Play or subscribe to our YouTube channel VTV4Go. Thank you for tuning in and until next time.